You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another episode of Violet Memoir. This has become one of my most watched episodes in a long time. In such a short amount of time. Like seriously, it's like 1400 views in just a few days. Like my goodness people, that is crazy. You guys really love this so far. I'm loving it so far. I can't wait to delve deeper into it. I know it delves with some very, very uh, adult themes, such as abuse and such. So, uh, I'm kind of worried. Yeah, I, I, I just don't like the way he looks. It looks he looks sad. He's either sad or resting. <laughs> so we shall see. Give me one moment, guys. I gotta adjust uh, alarm chan real quick. Make sure she's all. Up to par, she is. All right, now without further ado, let's jump right into it, shall we? Please enjoy. All right. The pink skin on his hands is hard enough and rough like they've been worn down. It's a stark contrast to his gentle touch. He does drop them at this point, looking relieved that I'm okay. It doesn't look to be an ounce of embarrassment on his face. Lacking his resolve, I look around the room for anyone staring at us, but there's only glances from curious onlookers. I guess they're lost in their own worlds. They're just good at hiding it. Adjusting the strap on my shoulder that nearly fell off, I realized that my laptop would have, would have still kept swinging. With a swelling feeling of panic, I quickly looked down to check, all the embarrassment from earlier vanishing as I worry, as worry replaces it. But my laptop bag was completely fine, hovering just a short distance away from the stairs. There's a small fleshy tube between my bag and the corner of the step. It takes me a few moments to realize that, but that between them is my savior's tail. Kilt swells in my chest as I frantically tug my bag away, shoving it behind me. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, are you okay? Despite my panicked voice and worried expression, the first response I get is a deep chuckle. Oh, whoa, whoa, calm down there, kid. He lifts, his, he lifts his hands in front of his chest, trying to calm me down as if I was some kind of child throwing a tantrum. This thing is taken much worse than a little crushing from a bag. Don't stress too much, you'll lose your hair and you don't want to lose that. To emphasize his point, he flicks his tail around in front of him. It looks slightly red where it got wedged, but otherwise it looks fine. It hurts like a bitch, but it's harmless otherwise. That guilt in my chest stirs a bit more, a bit more at that, but he has a toothy smile on his face, which makes it hard to stay sad. He seemed really intimidating when I first saw him, looking more like a thug than a student. But he's actually quite charming and nice. He still gives off a gruff, intimidating image, but he doesn't seem very aggressive at all. I shouldn't have judged him so quickly. Despite still being full of worry, I try to return his smile as best I can. It must look awkward and stilted, but he only nods in approval. There we go. That's what I like to see. It looks suits you much better, kid. Even though he called me that earlier, it's only sinking in now. It's not exactly insulting or even infuriating, but I can't help but feel embarrassed by it. Um, I'm not really a kid. I'm at college, after all. I gesture to the room around me, ignoring how abnormal I have to look over. Uh, uh, blah. Ignoring how abnormal I have to look to everyone around me. At that, he only seems to cock an eyebrow before giving a snort and turning around. He pulls his bag off his desk and carries what looks like a satchel. Giving me one more look over his shoulder, he walks away with one final remark. Yeah, well, you're a nice guy, kid. Make sure you take care of yourself. And just like that, the conversation's over. I can only watch as he walks up the stairs. I contemplate telling him goodbye, but I feel like it isn't needed. What I do notice while watching him leave does worry me and brings back some of that guilt from earlier. He seems to hobble while he walks, clearly limping and favoring his left leg. It's not very subtle, looking as if he's completely putting all his weight on it. For a moment, I wonder if I caused that to him before pushing the th thought away. A little shove against him wouldn't have caused that. He didn't even fall over. If that's any indication, he wasn't lying when he said his tail's been through some rough treatment. It's only as he disappears around the corner do I realize I never asked for his name or even said thank you. Should I try and catch up to him? He did just save my face and laptop from the, what would likely have been a pretty bad hit. As my eyes follow him, I notice something else. Between the bodies of the students leaving, I can faintly make out a figure leaning against the wall across the hall. It's the otter from earlier, and he looks to be scouting out all the students. What's he trying to find? Is he searching for someone? Just as I'm about to head out, a noise behind me catches my attention. It's the sound of falling paper and some muttering. I look back only to see the fox from earlier, looking just as bad as before. Actually, he's looking even worse now. His eyes are puffy and red, and it seems like he's about to start crying. Should I stay back and help him? But he didn't seem to really want me around, and I might just make things worse. I look at the door. The opossum will be gone soon. I gotta make a decision now. Hmm. Uh, 
awesome. See what the otter is up to. Stay behind and help the fox. Okay, so this looks like it's three different three different branching paths. Okay, so I want to see what things are up to. Are we going to do the otter right now? We're going to do the otter right now. So, I mean, he seems to be one of the main draws. Yeah. So this will be the branching path. Okay, I'm going to... Okay. Save right there. Leaving the hall is both liberating and relieving. I'm done with my first day of university, and honestly, it wasn't that bad. My teachers in high school made it seem so scary, but it's actually rather chill. I glance across the hall again, hoping to spot the otter I came out to check on. He's no longer there anymore. Did I miss him? Looking around, I can't immediately spot him, spot him even though the crowd is thinning. One figure, that, one figure that catches my attention is the fox from before walking past me. Figuring I should cut my losses and catch up to the vulpine, I run around in a corner and nearly slam into a familiar tall figure. Whoop! I'm barely able to stop myself, both from running into him and from having a heart attack. Jesus Christ! The muscle put pat the muscle puts a hand on my shoulder and as I breathe heavily, a look of concern spread across his face. It's only the second time I've seen him, but his face without a smile feels unnatural, like one always belongs there. Damn, sorry man, didn't mean to startle you. Quickly pulling myself together, I stand up straight again. His smile returns now that he doesn't think I'm going to faint, not even skipping a beat. I'm about to ask why he was standing there, waiting at the door, but he beats me to it. <laughs> I was just waiting for you to get out. Let I check up on you, especially after that tumble near the end. I can feel the embarrassment swelling in me again, my right ear flicking about nervously. Oh, uh, you saw that? I think everyone was still in the room. I think everyone who was still in the room saw that. The desk made a loud clang sound, and then you were falling. Good thing the other guy caught you. Jesus, really? God, that's embarrassing. I left my paws to cover my face, rubbing them up and down. After a couple seconds of hiding, I dropped them to my sides with a loud groan. Nah, I don't think anyone judged you for it. Feel bad for you, probably. I know I did. I tended to push my face back into my palms. I've completely humiliated myself on the first day. A large hand grips my shoulder, the suddenness causing me to nearly jump. Wow, his hand is huge. He could wrap around he could wrap one around my face with little effort. Now that the initial shock has worn off, it's actually reassuring. Despite his large size, he's not intimidating at all, and his warm presence is calming. Don't stress, man. Maybe you should come take a swim with me. I'm heading to campus gym now that I'm finished with classes. It's almost tempting, but I need to unpack my luggage. Even if it's just one bag. I can't tonight. Sorry. I just moved in today and I, uh, I need to unpack. I point behind me and my thumb even though I'm pretty sure my apartment is the other way. His smile doesn't waver at all and his eyes shine as he stands up straighter. Well, well, look at you. I can't keep someone away from their first day in their apartment. Gotta break that in, right? He emphasizes the last line with a wink and I can't shake the feeling he's implying something dirty. I let out a sheepish laugh. Normally I'd be rather nervous talking to someone like this. Something about this otter makes me feel like I can trust like, like I can trust him. I don't know if it's the smile or the friendly a attitude, but he doesn't make me feel nervous. He sticks his hand out. I'm confused for a second before realizing he's trying to give me a handshake. Name's Oscar. Hope I can see you around. You seem like you'll be a fun guy. Taking his hand tentatively, I'm unable to stop myself from snorting at that. <laughs> fun usually isn't the word people describe me with. D depressing is more what people call me. What? Nah, you got potential there. Sure, you're a bit quiet, but those normally end up being the most fun. His handshake is full of energy. I feel like my arm is getting a workout. The biggest thing that catches my attention, though, is that his arms have a fair bit of muscle. You're just now noticing that. Look at the man. He's an Adonis. He's Chris Redfield from Resident Evil. Let's see. Just how much does this guy swim? Noticing I've been staring at his arms instead of returning his introduction, a nervous chuckle escapes my throat before I'm able to push the words out. I hope I don't disappoint you, but my name's Wallace. He gives me a smile, which reminds me of the Cheshire Cat. Well, Wally, I'm excited to meet you. Hope we can work well together. A prickling feeling swells in the wells in the back of my neck as my fur raises. I pull my hand away a bit too hastily, and he gives me a questioning look. Just, Wallace is fine. There's a bit of ice that un unintentionally seeps into my tone, but it doesn't look like Oscar took any offense. Sorry, sorry. Just Wallace it is. Hope you'll take me up on my swimming offer. I'll consider it. I haven't gone swimming in, I don't know, years maybe? He saunters around to my side, tapping my back with his tail as he begins walking. Looks like we're heading for the main entrance to the building. No reason not to follow along with him. We definitely gotta get on that then, man. 
So, I'll see you on Wednesday. Look out for me so we can all sit together. Sit together? He gives me a sidelong glance, checking to see if I'm joking. We're in the same group. Unless there's another Wallace, I'm with the Wallace, uh, Stevens. Stewart. <laughs> I almost jump as he gives me a loud clap in response to my correction. Yeah, that one. My bad, man. He's practically skipping next to me, though it's more like a dance. His whole body just seems to flow elegantly as he moves. Is he, if he's this graceful on land, I want to see what he looks like in the water. Catching my eyes, he gives another playful wink before letting out a snort which turns into a snicker. He's so sincere with everything he does, it's impossible to not find him charming. All of a sudden, he stops dance moving next to me. It's so jarring, I almost, tri almost trip trying to stop as well. Well, I'll catch you on Wednesday, my man. Do you want my number in case you need to get a, we need to meet up for our project? No, oh, sure, I guess. I don't really I ever get texts from anyone that isn't that isn't my parents. He pulls out his smartphone to hand to me, his other hand gesturing as if he's waving something away. Bah, you look like you're a really nice guy. You deserve more friends. So you just earned a plus one new friend today. A warm, fuzzy feeling fills my chest as I type my number into his phone. I haven't had a proper friend since middle school. And you'll have another free more after a free more. Blah! And you'll have another three more after Wednesday. That one earns me a soft chuckle as I hand his phone back to him. Contact fully added. I'm not sure about that one. I'm pretty sure the fox I was sitting next to is in our group, and he doesn't seem like the type who wants to make friends. The way his eyes had cut through me like a knife isn't making me too keen on seeing him again either. Then again, it looks like it had been a rough day. Maybe that was just a one-off thing. Oscar looks unperturbed, as if that wasn't going to stop him. Anyone can be a friend if you try hard enough. Some are just a bit slower to warm than most. A phone rings with a single text from the otter. Ha! Normally these kinds of messages are awkward or creepy, joking at best. But from Oscar, it's a cute and very much the same kind of flirty charisma he's radiating. Tapping away to add him to my contact list, I have to ignore the smile growing wider on my face and the way my heart skip my heartbeat speeding up with excitement. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm optimistic as you, but I hope we can all get along. We will. Hey, one last thing. The muscular quickly presses up against me, his body heat covering me like a wave. He's like a little furnace. Or a big furnace. <laughs> Whoa. Before I can do anything, an arm wraps around me and pulls me tightly against the otter's chest. A scent floods my senses as my face is pressed directly into his shirt. I didn't notice it before, but he has a very distinct smell. I was expecting some kind of ocean smell, but it's a lot more chemical than that. Chlorine? Hey, come on. Look up. The words jog me out of my stupor, but when I follow his instruction, I notice he's holding his phone up at, his phone up to take a photo of us. Is he really taking a selfie with me? My eyes look up to Oscar's face for a moment, and I can see his natural, perfect smile. Even with no effort, it's overwhelmingly captivating. Never having been a very photogenic person, I give a genuine of a smile as I can before hearing his phone make the distinct digital clicking sound. Before I can get adjusted to the warm feeling against me, he pulls away. His hand slowly slips out from my shoulder in a fluid and gentle motion, a sensation giving me a slight shiver. Bing! <laughs> Bing! Chandler, bing! Realizing it's probably a message from my new friend, I opened it up. It's a photo we just took. Before I can even register why he sent it, or even ask for that matter, he's shoving his, he's shoving his face, he's shoving his phone into my face. I can't see what he's trying to show me with how he's moving his phone back and forth. What is it? Your contact! I changed it to the photo we just took. He points to the top of the screen with his claw. A little picture shows me, showing, shows me giving a surprisingly nice-looking smile. That's a keeper. Make sure you change yours too, man. Almost like that almost like that was all he wanted to do. The otter starts to jog in place with the occasional step to the left of me. I'll catch up with you later, man. I gotta get to the gym now so I can get home before dark. See ya. He doesn't even give me a chance to respond before he's off, jogging lightly away towards, towards where I assume the gym is. Admittedly, I'm a little confused as to what exactly just happened, but there's one thing I know. I made a friend today. It's been one day, and my fresh start is already paying off. See ya, Oscar. At a much slower waddle my, than my newfound friend's jog, I make my way down, make my way back down the street towards my apartment. I'm dreading the amount of stuff I'm going to have to put away. Back at the apartment, it's surprisingly silent, almost eerie. I'm not sure if it's because people are out partying, out studying for their new classes, or just resting up after their first day. As I unlock my room, it opens up into cold darkness. Having no roommate is great for privacy, but it's a little lonely having no one else to come home to. I try to ignore the yearning for home and flick on the lights. It's not too cold yet. The autumn weather only gives the room a cool wisp that makes my fur tingle. I place my laptop bag on the desk and look around at the sparse furniture located across the room. 
The bedside tables can barely be called drawers. I'm not sure how they expect us to fit all our clothes in a single one. I'd be able to fit a couple shirts and pants along with my underwear at best. Maybe they thought we'd split the closet between the both of us, but even with that, we wouldn't have much space. I'd probably open my luggage bag and get to work putting away what I can, hanging up the few normal clothes I have in the closet and shoving the rest in the two nightstands. After putting away my shirts in the top drawer of my would-be roommate's nightstand, I try to do the same with my parents, but the bottom drawer won't come out. For a second, I wonder if it's locked before realizing that's stupid, because why would I? Why would only one nightstand have a look? Have a lock? Have a look? After a few more gentle pulls, I begin to lose my patience and put all my weight into dislodging the drawer. For God's sake, just come on out! In a moments, in moments away, I'm moments away from giving up when I feel it's starting to budge. But before I can celebrate, I'm being flung away onto my back. A loud crashing sound thunders across the room, and a surge of pain runs up my leg. Groaning, I sit up in accent and assess the damage. Checking over my leg for any injuries to match the, spike ache, the spiking ache coming and running up my skin. But there doesn't look like to be any real damage. Instead, I find the entire drawer just lodged from the nightstand next to me. I must have smacked my leg on the way out. Ignoring the dull pain, I pick up the drawer and slide back over to the nightstand, but I stop when I notice a glimpse of purple. Leaning closer, I can see a thin book hidden below the bottom drawer. Someone must have really wanted to hide whatever this is. I remove the book from its hiding place. The word diary is the first thing that catches my eye. A small twinge of curiosity rises within me, but I just push it down. I don't want to invade someone's privacy, but what should I do? Should I just put it back? Well, that seems a bit pointless. Whoever lived here before probably forgot about it. They wouldn't be here otherwise. Toss it away? But they might have accidentally left it behind and want it back. Best case scenario would be returning it to them, but where would I even start? I don't even know who this belongs to, let alone how old this book is. With a deep sigh, I fall back onto my bed. I need some leads to go on. Running my fingers along the edges of the book, I notice something strange about its condition. Hmm. There's something... Something unusual about this... About this memoir. Other than a small bit of wear near the spine, there's very little markings or damage on the book at all. This book was either barely used, pretty new, or well taken care of. Turning the book over yields even more answers. In the bottom right corner, underneath the barcode is the manufacturing date. January 2019. That's early last year! That means this probably belonged to the last resident. They might still have, the, they might still have them on file. Springing up, from, springing up from my lying down position, I head out the door with an excited bounce to my step. I walk out of the elevator on the ground floor to the feeling of my earlier vigor dissipating. The light clacking of my claws against the floor makes me nervous, the echo reminding me just how empty the lobby is after dark. I slowly shuffle my way closer to the front desk, Catching sight of the receptionist, she's a different one from when I checked in this morning. She's tall and thin, but her features are hard to make it to make out. I think she's a sheep of some kind. When I get closer, though, I can see she's actually a poodle. Her fur is puffed out and meticulously groomed to the point it looks like wool. She's packing up for the day. My mouth dries as I check the time on my phone. It's 6:05 p.m. That's five minutes after the receptionist is supposed to have closed. A sickly feeling wells in my stomach, and that's nearly enough to deter me away. But I didn't just come here to back out before even starting. Something tells me that if I don't do this now, I'll never do it. Taking a moment to calm down, I force myself to walk up to the counter. The canine doesn't notice me at first, or if she does, she's choosing to ignore me. Tapping my claws nervously on the desk, I feel extremely unwanted. The disdain she's exuding is suffocating. I think I'm getting a headache. Eventually, she turns to me with a sigh so filled with annoyance that I want to run back to my room and pretend I never found this book. I guess that answers my question about if she's ignoring me or not. You know the front desk is open, isn't open after six, right? Now that I can see her face more clearly, she's wearing a tired expression. The bags under her eyes make me feel even more guilty. Y yeah, I just needed you to check something for me real fast. I, pr I promise it won't take very long. At least, I hope it doesn't take very long. After a few seconds of contemplation, she finally sits back in front of the computer. Fine, don't do this again, though. Some of us just want to go home. After some key taps and clicking around with the mouse, she looks back at me. So, what is it? Realizing I've just been standing there like an idiot, I quickly put the diary on the desk. Someone left something in my room. I was hoping I could get their name so I could maybe give it back. I'm in room 603 on side A. I think the person was on side B. It was in the nightstand on that side. The only response she gives me is a noncommittal huff as she returns to typing. After about 20 seconds, her eyes widen slightly before quickly going back to normal. It happened so fast, I'm not sure it actually happened. I am tempted to lean over to see what's on the screen, but I exercise a bit of restraint. She's no longer tapping on the keyboard nor looking at the screen. She seems to be contemplating something. A few seconds of silence fly by before she turns to me with an unsure look on her face. Hmm, 
what happened here? Sorry, but we're not really allowed to discuss the information of previous residents. I hope you understand. The only immediate response I can give is a slow nod. Oh, this makes sense. I can't help but feel like I'm being lied to. After all, why would she go through the effort of looking for the information if she was just going to deny me at the end? Well, um, could you send this to them? It's, it's theirs and they might want it back. I slide the book across the desk to the poodle, but she instantly pushes it back towards me. Sorry, we don't keep records of their future address. Maybe you can keep it. She must have realized how silly that sounds because she dismisses that with a wave of her hand. Her demeanor is more nervous than annoyed now. Just what did she see? Or just throw it away. It's an old diary after all. She probably has a new one. She? Once again, I feel like I'm being stonewalled into a, into a, in a really bizarre way. What she's saying makes sense and it's probably true, but she's saying it in a way where I feel like they're hiding something from me. It's actually very eerie. I suddenly feel very uncomfortable, like I'm being watched with the security cameras. This place has a secret. Ooh, I love secrets. I'm rubbing my hands together very quickly. <laughs> Ooh, I love secrets. Oh, I can't. Oh, I love this. Is that, yeah, the mystery deepens. Oh, this is so cool. Anyway, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching. That has been a new episode of Violet Memoir. Uh, just uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Guys, we're going to hit 2,000 very, very soon. I am very excited. My God. All the support and love you guys are giving me. Ooh, can't get enough of it. But anyway, guys, I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.